Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Shalev. I'm here to bring you our novel study with Humphrey. And I'm going to be reading a book, The Trouble with Chickens, a J.J. Tully mystery. It's by Doreen Cronin, the person who wrote Click Clack Moo, Cows, Cows That Type, and it's a funny mystery on a farm. So let's dive in. Chapter one, chicken breath. It was a hot, sunny day when I met that crazy chicken. So hot that sometimes I think the whole thing might have been a mirage. But mirages don't have chicken breath, mister. She was a short, tired-looking bird with a funny red comb on her head. It looked about as useful to her as a spoon is to a snake. Her eyes were tiny and black and set so close to each other they practically touched. I'd be surprised if the right eye could report anything back other than seeing the left eye. Chickens make me nervous. Can't keep them quiet. We stared at each other for an awkward moment. I nodded to tell her to move on. She picked up her left foot carefully, not sure whether she should back out of my sweltering doghouse. As her foot hung in midair, she lowered her pointy white head and very deliberately said, nothing. A phone rang, a car backfired, a blender roared, and that crazy chicken didn't even blink. She was one tough bird. Chapter two, introductions. My name is Jonathan, Jonathan Joseph Tully, JJ for short. I spent seven years as a search and rescue dog. The quiet life in the country where Barb, my trainer, lived was my reward for all those years of surface. Some reward. I could track the six-day-old scent of a lost hiker or pull a guy out from under a pile of rubble, but I couldn't get this crazy chicken out of my yard. Her name was Millicent. I called her Moosh just because it was easier to say, and seemed to annoy her. She had two little puffy chicks with her. She called them Little Boo and Peep. I called them Dirt and Sugar, for no particular reason. Moosh had gotten the word that I knew how to solve problems. Boy, did that chicken have problems. I'll pay you in chicken feed, said Moosh. That was the first that was the first problem. I don't work for feed. No dice, I replied. Dirt and sugar were bathing in my water bowl. I'll pay you in feathers. That was the chicken's second problem. I already got a pillow, I grumbled. Dirt and sugar were now playing in my food bowl. Crazy chicks, I was losing patience. I'll work for a cheeseburger. I said, take it or leave it. Moosh's tiny chicken head cast a huge pointy shadow against the side of my weather-beaten doghouse. She took a step away from me, turning her head to glance at dirt and sugar. Those two feather balls jumped out of my water bowl and rolled around in the grass. They looked like they didn't have a care in the world, but their mom sure did. A passing cloud offered some uncertain shade from the sun. Moosh's big pointy chicken shadow finally moved. Done, said Moosh. Well done, I cracked. I thought she smiled, but it was tough to tell with a beak. Chapter three, chicken missing. Moosh paced back and forth. Dirt and sugar followed behind her. As Moosh took a step forward, Sugar fell into line right behind her. I expected Dirt to do the same, but for some reason, Dirt waited two beats and then got in line. Dirt left enough space in between herself and Sugar to park a squirrel. Enough space to park a squirrel. I'm no chicken expert, but something just wasn't right. Who's missing? I asked Moosh. The truth was somewhere between her brain and her beak. I wasn't sure it would survive the trip. Spill it, Moosh, I grunted. She was getting on my nerves. Dirt and Sugar stepped out from behind their mother. They were half yellow, half white, like fuzzy popcorn kernels with feet. They were new enough to this world to be spitting up eggshell. 
Their eyes were wide and young and close set like their mother's. Sugar turned her head, stepped out from behind her popcorn sister, and motioned with one tiny wing et for dirt to stay behind. A ladybug flew into the doghouse and crawled across the floor, oblivious to the chicken tension building in the room. I growled. Sugar peeped. I growled again. Urgh. Sugar took a step closer, bracing herself against the water bowl. Poppy and Sweetie are missing, she whispered. She may have looked fluffy and new, but this chick had already learned that life outside the shell was not it was all cracked up to be. Oh my. Chapter 4. Poppy and Sweetie. Poppy and Sweetie. Hmm, their names annoyed me too. But it wasn't time for more nicknames. Nicknames are only cute when your no mother knows where you are. I had Dirt and Sugar take me to the last place they saw Poppy and Sweetie. It was just outside the chicken coop. I told the Fluffy family to stand still. I didn't have any of Poppy or Sweetie's belongings to sniff, but I had their siblings. Close enough. I had no idea how hard it might be to track the scent if I found it. On the job, we call it probability of detection, POD for short. With no personal effects to sniff and no experience tracking poultry, chickens, the probability of detection in this case was low, very low. But now was not the time to burden a chicken mother's heart with low POD. There was an easy way to do a search and a hard way. The easy way is early in the evening with a cool breeze and a steady partner. The hard way is high noon with a crazy chicken clucking in your ear and two feather balls of fluff riding your tail. The search was going to go the hard way. I had to give it to Moose straight. Humans have a knack for finding themselves in places where they don't belong. Dark woods, cold snow, deep canyons. Lucky for them, they stink. But I don't know from chickens, so don't get your hopes up. Moose took a deep breath. She knew the score. In the harsh sunlight, her comb had lost its bright red luster. It was the 4th of July weekend and the air was heavy. I got down as low as I could. The earth will hold on to your smelly secrets for a long, long time, and it will give them up to any dog who comes sniffing. Problem is, it gives up all its secrets at once. You have to be able to sniff through them to find what you need. I got the smell of bare feet, barbecue sauce, blueberries, but it didn't take long to pick up what I thought was a tr chicken trail. I followed around the edge of the yard, under a pile of rotting wood, past the barn, and then across the open field. For all I knew, it could have been a chicken sandwich. Then something hit me in the eye. Hard. I stopped in my tracks. Moosh, dirt, and sugar were right behind me. When I looked up, I got hit again. It was rain. Hard rain. The kind of rain that makes grown men wear funny boots, that kind of rain. I called off the search. Sugar was in my face. Listen, mutt, my brother and sister are missing and you're worried about getting wet? She was so close to me, I could have bitten her in half. Get lost, I mumbled. Make like a sponge, mister. I had to hand it to Sugar. She was as tough as her mother. Chapter 5. Chicken Scratch. The sky turned from gray to green to black. If the rain hadn't already washed off the scents of Poppy and Sweetie, it seemed the wind would have blown it away. After a short stroll in the hard rain, I decided to get back to my warm bed. I had had enough of this little chicken adventure. It was time for a nap, after all. The trouble with dog houses, though is they don't have doors. Moosh, Dirt, and Sugar were just a few minutes behind me.
You smell like wet dog, said Sugar. I am a wet dog, I grumbled. Is this the search part of the rescue, or is it the rescue part, asked Sugar. She reminded me of a splinter I had once. It bothered me, and I was much better mood when it was gone. Before I could answer her, Moosh waved a note in front of me. I found it in the chicken coop, cried Moosh. I tried to get, grab the note out of Moosh's beak. That thing was sharper than it looked. I gave up my hold on the note. Two things were clear. Who had ever left that note had fast feet and a head full of big words. The note said, I have your peeps. It behooves you to rendezvous. Twilight, your place. Which basically means somebody stole the chickens and behooves you to rendezvous means that you should probably meet them and twilight your place is the time that they're supposed to meet. Chapter six, chicken tears. Moosh paced back and forth. Sugar and dirt followed behind her in the same oddly spaced line as before. I stood in front of Moosh and brought, brought her little chicken parade to a halt. Sometimes your gut can tell you more than your nose. This was one of those times. I could see from the look in her eyes that Moosh was trying to think about how to get past me, and I bared my teeth and moved closer. Urgh. That changed her mind. I've never backed down from a staring contest in my life, but her eyes were so tiny and close set it was making me cross-eyed. I was breathing in what she was breathing out. Her left foot was bouncing up and down like she was standing on a hot plate. She looked down at the note, and then she looked at dirt and sugar. When she finally looked up at me, her eyes were filled with tears. I'm no stranger to tears. The sad truth about search and rescue work is that there isn't always a rescue. So I had seen plenty of tears before. But I had never seen chicken tears, and I hope I never have to see them again. Moosh's tears finally got the best of her. Her beak began to quiver. The note fell to the floor. I had what I needed. I didn't want to hold her precious note anyway. I just wanted to sniff it. Sure enough, it reeked of one thing. The same chicken scent I had been following before the storm. The trail was right under my nose. And we're going to stop there for today. And we're going to find out what happens next. So, so far, there's several animals in this story. J.J. Tully is a dog. And Moosh and Dirt and Sugar are chickens. And the problem that we're having in this story is that two of their um, chicken brothers and sisters have been taken and we don't know how and the other part is that what even though jj tully was trying to find the scent in the rain and in a storm you can't find that smell of a person and dogs have a really good sense of smell that's why he's a search and rescue dog and that's why moosh asked for him so right now we don't know who wrote the note and we don't know who uh, took the chicks, and we're going to have to find out more tomorrow. So if you like this, keep watching and subscribing. See you soon. Bye.